Um, we're going to start out with the initiatives. I guess I'm actually first up here. Uh, the COPUS release process, we're hitting stage three today, assuming that no one has objected, and so far no one has objected. A couple more sign ups, but once we get those, we will be uh, moving to testing GoFest in production, uh, or the latest release in production. Uh, upgrading the testing process. Um, oh, sorry, uh, and then the next bit is no, there's no progress yet on the bulk uh, So, testing progress, nothing new. Uh, the interrupt tests are fixed, uh, but now go ahead, best of the bugs, we're going to fix that. Um, but most of the, the focus has been on uh, building the testing infrastructure, not the specific um, yeah, unit tests for the best. Uh, benchmarks. Uh, Alan. Hi. Yeah. Okay. So benchmarks. The uh, old, not old at all, actually, but benchmarks or IPFS team uh, stopped working uh, a few weeks ago and has since been resurrected. Uh, it was a. It got restarted for some reason, and um, there is a piece of infrastructure there <coughs> to. Uh, to uh, just make sure that it starts up everything that should be running when it comes back online. So that was pretty easy to fix in, in hindsight. Um, there is a cool video where on Wednesday last week, we had a great uh, kind of conversation about benchmarks in general and what, what's going to happen with them. Um, that video that I've linked to there is worth watching, but one of the things that is in that video is me talking through uh, the benchmarks um, where uh, site and how it works and what infrastructure is there um, and so the kind of I guess to summarize that the, they exist and they have been focused uh, on largely on like JS IPFS um, and they can't they work really well um, if you would like to write a benchmark or you have like some um, some idea for a benchmark that you need to see because it's something you're working on um, then um, please come and have a look at that. Uh, let me link to the repo. It's just IBFS um, slash benchmarks. Um, but it would be cool if we got other people writing benchmarks for this. Um, that would be very cool. Um, oh, that's wrong. OK, forget that. All right, I'll do that later. Anyway, so. Uh, the what I'm doing now is I am just looking at the benchmarks and seeing what uh, what we can do to make it more useful to go IPFS because it's largely focused around JS IPFS. I'm going to be working on that um, and hopefully getting it up to speed so that um, it it will it will be a useful resource for go IPFS as well as JS IPFS. And so that's benchmarks. Just try and paste that URL again. again. There we go. Okay. Uh, uh, can someone mute? Okay, thank you. Uh, so I guess now it's garbage collection. Uh, Pinning, Dirk, and or Alan. Any it's there? Yeah, I guess I can talk to that as well. Um, sorry, the sirens are me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, not specifically me, but um, typical. Uh, it is, hang on, sorry. The siren means uh, garbage collection working. There's essentially no news in garbage collection. The the PR has is still outstanding, and I haven't had another chance to look at it. But it is it is there, and we want to continue with it. Um, Dirk, unless you have any other news on that. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so I'm not really sure where to focus priorities because I, you know, in Q3 I'm I'm, I'm working on IPFS ad performance, uh, where I was until last week, and then there's also a new project coming on that I'm going to be on full-time so I'm kind of full-time on three projects so um, I'm gonna have to drop something I guess <laughs> or work a lot not sleep anymore uh, my understanding was the the tentative plan was to have um, Alan kind of take the the lead on landing the PR and so that you don't have three full-time projects uh, 
know, hopefully I can just, just have one. But Ellen is also full time on getting benchmarks working. Um, so <laughs> it does create a bit of an issue. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's something we can talk about later. Yeah, I mean, I, I will make slow progress on all of the things. Essentially, okay. the more things that I'm spread around and this, uh, yeah, it's more so as time get progresses, I'm trying to just focus on one thing. But um, yeah, I will, if no one else is able to work on it, then I'll own it. It is essentially in my repo, so I'll, I'll have to pick it up. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a good answer for, for that. Uh, I just want to check, do we want to talk about this uh, kind of like management stuff right now or should we wait till the end? Uh, we could leave it till the end. Okay. Or we could talk about it separately. We could talk about RC or Slack. Uh, okay, so delegated routing. Idle, Alan, Jacob. Uh, yeah, I, I've put this one so I can quickly give uh, an update to the HTTP connection pool exertion uh, beast got tamed. Uh, it's fixed in the latest version of delegated modules uh, for uh, delegated routing modules for content and peers, as well as we uh, backported them for the older version, which was not passing away. Because uh, the latest one did not work with the version of JSLIP P2P that shipped with, will ship with uh, JS APFS and having uh, those fixes backported to the older uh, branch uh, enable us to ship those fixes sooner than later. And Hugo also had a good idea to make sure we run HTTP2 on our preload and delegate nodes. So we just use one connection and multiplex request on top of one connection instead of risking having multiple ones. So. Yeah, Stephen. Are we going to run out of connections between the Nginx proxy and uh, the, uh, the API? Sorry, what, what do we put there? Yeah, uh, so like we, I know we have an Nginx proxy that then talks to the API. Does that, it does the Nginx proxy limit the number of connections to the API? Yeah, like my understanding is that, because right now the IPFS IO supports HTTP2, but for some reason our preload node do not. And uh, I imagine uh, HTTP2 support is at the Nginx level. So it's just a matter okay. of flipping okay. the flag. Yeah, right. It's uh, not okay. yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's sort of like uh, dog food that a little bit uh, con uh, delegated routing in uh, embedded JS APFS running in Brave uh, with this uh, 0.2 uh, branch and it seems to work much better. There's like the, the number of requests uh, dropped significantly. And I'm uh, working on similar fixes for uh, HTTP, uh, DNS lookups over HTTP and uh, preload nodes uh, in JSAPFS. Uh, I should learn that soon, but that's not related to delegated truth. Yep. Okay. Uh, so next up, uh, Gossip Sub, Vasco. Hey guys, so regarding Gossip Sub, uh, I was iterating it with uh, JSAPFS last week. And I hit a problem with the JSAPFS tests, which uh, I debugged and basically the gossip sub implementation was not supporting uh, self-subscribe in a way that you subscribe and add your handler and then you publish it and you receive through your handler as the JSAPFS tests expect. So basically I made PRs for that in gossip sub adding that as an optional parameter so that we can use that in our implementation and from the chain safe guys, they basically can use that as they intend to. And I also added that uh, that option to Floodsub as well to be similar in the way we use both. And so now I'm uh, just blocked on the gossip sub release on their ends in order to get it updated in package JSON and we can merge stuff. Jacob already reviewed the uh, JSLP to PPR and it should be good to go once uh, they release the package. And then uh, I will ping Alan for the review. It should be really fast to review it. And uh, it also uh, has the configurations for enabling it as uh, GoIPFS as. 
and that's it. Okay. Uh, I'm actually the only note under subdomain uh, gateways. Um, I would like feedback from the, the, the Bitpeat team on uh, using PRIDs as uh, CIDs, or sorry, converting PRIDs to CIDs and macros, storing them as CIDs in text. Uh, Vasco's already uh, commented on this, uh, but I guess no one else here is actually on that team. So, actually, no, I take it back. Vasco has not. Uh, Jacob has. We can, we've got the libp2p sync right after this, so we can, yeah, we can bring it up there. there as well. Yeah. I have a question about multi base, but it's somewhat, somewhat unrelated. It could be just going blockers. So, uh, yeah, we can just we can talk to them about that as well. For sure, sounds good. Okay, um, let's see. Next one up, uh, replica consolidation. Jacob. Yeah, so I started the interface migration for libp 2 p Running into some issues, I'm just trying to make that sane for people to require. Um, should be able to finish that this week. And then I've got a PR out for starting with the switch, pulling that into JS libp 2 um, instead of it standing alone. I'm just trying to work on avoiding polluting the JS libp 2 commit history um, because we're pulling in so many modules that could get nasty pretty quickly. Um, but also trying to make sure that we maintain the uh, contributors as part of that pullover. Um, so I have a issue here linked to that. If you care about that at all, uh, please look at that PR and comment. Um, otherwise, I should be able to finish that this week as well. That is it. OK. Uh, let's see. Distributed, oh, signaling, so same. Yeah. So added that as a, a new initiative, but it's something we've been talking about for a couple of weeks. Um, so there is a spec for handling distributed uh, distributed approach to signaling. Um, one of the things that we talked about is doing a SDP exchange over a circuit relay connection. So one of the things I want to try to look at this week is getting a proof of concept of that SDP exchange happening over circuit relay and then work on flushing out the spec um, for that. I think there are a variety of options that we could look at for that, but that seems to be the, the quickest win that we can get is going over a circuit relay. OK. Uh, IPNS, get in. Yeah. Um, so mostly still working on uh, pub sub PRs, which I'll get to in a sec. And uh, I'm going to be moving some of the uh, the Namesys code into its own package so that people can use it outside of GoIPFS. Uh, if you have thoughts about that, I, I link the issue. Um, uh, I've also been doing, yeah, so back to the pubs of PRs, I realized that I, I'm not sure I've, like, you know, detailed the, the high overview of what's going on implementation-wise for anyone in JS land who is interested. Um, mostly, there's going to be some notifications for when peers join and leave, uh, um, join and leave a channel. Um, we're going to have discovery being called internally. Um, and we have this go to P2P pub sub router, like a, a value store on top of uh, pub sub that we can use for things like IPNS. And that's going to have a custom protocol for asking for the latest updates for stuff. Um, thank you lots to Steven for like getting me reviews so that I can do things. Um, Art. Thank you. Uh, much. And yeah, um, Dominic, Hugo, I don't know if there's any IPNS over DNS things you want to tell people. Uh, so the status on some of that stuff on my end is kind of uh, halted at the moment just because we need to come to some agreement, like um, discuss some of that stuff and figure out how it's going to work um, across projects. Um, that is just a conversation we need to have. Uh, specifically, I think you're going to be involved with that, so we can talk about it. Um, Hugo, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, not much. Um, right now, I'm still going through some PRs and need to land on JS to properly ship everything. And when I'm uh, ready to actually ship the router, uh, I will probably set up the, the meeting with 
everyone interested in, IP, in IPNS to figure out everything we need to ship this. The most important important thing, and then meaning is going to be how to handle uh, multiple routers uh, in a proper proper fashion in Go and JS. Yeah, that's basically it. Is there an issue or something to track um, this coordination work? Uh, I have an issue to track my progress on the uh, JS uh, land. Um, the coordination issue, we have a couple of things in the IPNS, uh, the, in the specs uh, repo, I think, at the end. I'm, I'm right. I think I'm right about it. Uh, but uh, it's not like a formal thing about like integrating everything. Just uh, uh, some thoughts that we dumped uh, in there about naming and about multiple routers and everything. But we will probably start from there. Uh, the discussions, how to integrate everything. Uh, so is, is there a spec in progress? Uh, there's an issue with some ideas to improve the spec, the current spec. Okay. There's there's a yeah there's an issue with some spec talking about for what do we do once we have multiple routers. Uh, I don't think we have a spec yet for IPNS over DNS. Similarly, we don't have a an explicit spec for the IPNS over PubSub as an independent transport until that gets like finalized. I think it'd be really useful if we took if we updated these issues to reflect the current state of things and what needs to happen next. Um, because I think we might end up in a state where we're not clarifying things. Sorry, I can't do this. Sorry, it drives me crazy. I don't know what it sounds like for you guys, but like I just keep hearing like a blip of myself. Um, but yeah, to, to reflect like the current state of things and what, what needs to be done left because right now I think the, the checklist there is like um, maybe a little bit out of date in the 205 issue. Um, so if we can clarify like the next steps or what the question is that we need input on, um, I think we can get you guys uh, better better unblocked versus um, just knowing that there is some decision that has to happen but not having clarity on what it is. So can you clarify that a little bit? The, the 205 spec is like not super, the 205 issue is like not super old or anything. Yeah, that's from like that's from like a month ago. Yeah, right now I think we're just going through the things we need on each side, uh, especially like uh, me on the DNS side and JS side, and a DM on both sub side on the Go side. Uh, and after that, we need to either start with uh, implementing PubSub on JS or DNS on Go then we need to work it out. But right now we're just finishing our um, work towards Go, Go PubSub and JS DNS. After that is finished, we will progress with other stuff. That's the current state as I give it. And apologies, I misspoke. I meant the, the 2000. I didn't realize which link I'd clicked. Okay, that's that's that one is mine. Um, that's not. I updated a little bit uh, as we did uh, the OKRs, and that's uh, basically up to date. That's the stuff I need to do before we can get uh, a more broader conversation about um, implementing PubSub in JS. And that one, I think it includes getting the Go DNS working, I would assume. If it's not there. Uh, you mean DNS over HTTPS or uh, IPNS over DNS? Uh, basically both. OK, uh, but for IPNS over DNS, it would be really nice to have a spec so that we can talk about it. Um, yeah. At the moment, like it's kind of like reverse engineering. I guess fine. I'm being hypocritical here because this is how JavaScript was built. Or JSON was built, but uh, it's reverse engineering from JS, uh, so it's hard to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, but that's what I mean. I need to go through a couple of those tasks there and okay. then I'll finish the spec and awesome. go over to it, Dominic and get the uh, Go router um, working with the spec. Okay, anyone else have any other questions on this? Discussion points? Nope, okay. Uh, next, migration of multi-hash keys and data in the data store. Uh, yeah, I, I can talk to this a little bit. Uh, so we have, we have Adam on the call who's been uh, building a uh, repo migrator for JS so that we can move between uh, different repo versions uh, in the browser. Uh, which would be super cool. Um, and the, it's this close to being ready, uh, ready to go and merge. Um, it just needs a few, few polishings, I think. Um, and the natural progression of that work is to then write a, write a, a migration for the repo. And one of the things that um, I know eventually needs to be done is migrate the, the repo to using multi-ashes instead of CIDs. Um, and so uh, I think the, the idea of putting it here was just to kind of raise awareness of, uh, of the fact that this now exists. And thank you, Adam, for, for sorting it out. Um, but also that um, the we could now start, uh, we could do this migration um, and maybe get it done. Uh, and so the idea was to, to do it with a new repo version, um, have a migration in place to do that. Um, and we just wanted to check uh, with the go side of, tea, of, of things that um, doing an, a repo migration for this, incrementing the version number was kind of a good way to go. Or if we wanted, like, I mean, an alternative could be to do it, uh, like, uh, you know, as we go, like, we continue to go along. Um, we, uh, yeah, go on. We would like to do repo migration. Uh, there are two outstanding issues that we never really finally finished. Uh, one is IFS reps local uh, is currently expected to return CIDs. We have to make them return like raw block CIDs, something like that to retain compatibility or return multi hashes, but then they may not be quite correct. Uh, the second issue is that provider records need to use raw multi hashes and correct the USC IDs. Um, and that just a change where we're to make the network and it may break some things, but luckily 90% of the content is still CIDB0, so it'll just magically work. Uh, but the longer we wait on this, the more painful things get. So we should do this as soon as we can. Unfortunately, we have no one working on this currently. Go. Uh, but if JS starts leading on this, uh, go, like, I'll just make sure that it happens and go. Um, so like basically, we need one side to start like pushing on this, and then the other side, I think, will just follow, if that makes sense. With the, with the refs call, um, the problem there is that you will have added them in different versions, but your output might change. You might get a different... Uh, the problem there is that you will forget the first, you will forget the CID type. So, like, if this if the data store just stores object or blocks, or sorry, yeah, blocks, you don't know the the codec anymore. Uh, so when you walk the data store, yeah, got it. Although, actually, wait, no, refs local may be fine. Is that no, no, yeah, that's all, yeah, that's all your local blocks, yeah, no, so that wouldn't work. So like pins are fine because pins we store the, the codec, uh, but for just like arbitrary blocks that we happen to have, especially because like with the way providers work, we like we don't record this information. It's kind of annoying. Now we do have some work in uh, IPFS to like record providers, uh, so like we could then explicitly say I want to provide this key or the CID, but that actually like that's the exact opposite of what we want from like a CID v1 v2 perspective. Where like from that perspective, we really want to just provide the raw multi hash so that we don't care what CID we look up in the, in the, uh, the network. We just look up the data and then interpret it locally. Okay, so we need a, some sort of solution for refs. Yeah, uh, refs is pretty easy. I think we can just like return raw CIDs, just return base thirty two CID v1 of like like raw blocks. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, like, yes, it'll be breaking, but it's technically correct. Uh, and it's less breaking than just returning like the raw multi hashes, or less confusing than raw, raw multi hashes. The problem is, like, a raw multi hash is also a valid uh, like B, or B1 CID, which I think will confuse users more than just returning like raw CIDs. Okay, got it. But I, I don't know.
Um, but like essentially, the uh, like having a repo migration in place would be uh, a good good idea. And we need we yeah some sort of, yeah if if we do do we need some sort of solution for refs, even if it is just actually print out raw. Yeah, but basically, before we do the repo migration, we'll have to have a solution for refs in place, and we will also have to switch over providing to providing Rossi IDs, which will require a bunch of changes in the node stack. Uh, but I think like if one side starts pushing on this, I think the other side will just follow. So or sorry, one implementation pushes on this, one, the other implementation will follow. So as long as someone starts working on this, I think it will like, take off finally. Adam, do you have any questions or want to you want to ask about this while you're here? <clears throat> yeah, I also I'll have to dig a bit into code about this and <laughs> think it through to understand the implications that here. So I don't really have any questions in the moment. Yeah, the main implications, at least in Go, is like types everywhere. Um, yeah, so like we have to now change all of the, I guess actually maybe easier in Go because we have like clear types that we can easily change things. But yeah, basically like everything that was a CID will now be multi-hash like when you get down to the block store and below. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I guess we can also start moving forward on this in Go. Uh, I'll start moving forward this on this in uh, the content routing and go uh, as soon as possible, and then we can get that first because I think that is like the hard dependency for all this getting this done in content routing. Once we have done in content routing, uh, then we can start migrating everything else internally. Okay, any other questions on this, or can we move forward? Okay, uh, design of your proposals. Um, we currently have two. Uh, Lytle. Uh, yep. So there's a very short proposal to allow, like in web browsers, we will need to have a own protocol handler that stays in location bar. And the idea is that the idea is to allow a DNS link under IPFS protocol handler. Uh, as well as like right, they in, we initial initially had like IPFS protocol handler for immutable content and separate IPNS handler for immutable. Uh, sorry, for mutable. Uh, so the idea was uh, one to one uh, mapping from paths like IPFS paths and IPNS paths. Uh, however. Uh, we may have uh, other naming systems uh, and in general mixing uh, DNS link under IPNS namespace turned out to be problematic for us. So the idea is to uh, simplify UX in web browser by allowing DNS link under IPFS protocol handler, which is sort of what people would expect. Uh, I'm not sure if I did a good job now of, of explaining it, but I think I made a better job in the issue I linked. So if anyone is interested in how we would load websites in uh, browsers which support IPFS protocol handler natively, uh, would be very useful to have multiple points of view in that uh, pull okay. request. Uh, well, I think. I think the way to do this now is uh, everyone reads the issue, uh, reads the discussion, the pull request, and then we schedule a call uh, where we can all get on it and like make a final decision and say like, hey, like th these are all the arguments we've had. This is the current state of things. Like, where are we going? Uh, if you are interested, please put your name down under attendees, uh, and then we can schedule. Like, I'll send an email on that. Um, And we can organize a call there. Okay. Uh, anything else on that before we move on? Okay. Uh, next one, final decision on .eth uh, in, uh, as a TLD in DNS link. The basic idea here is that um, ENS wants to uh, be able to go to like slash IPNS slash something .eth and have it automatically redirect to .eth.link because they don't have a TLD because I can is I can. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 the real design question here is really like, do we want to do this? Uh, do we want to do it some other way? Because ideally, we would have everything under like slash something, or like, like slash ETH, slash DNS link, slash whatever. Um, uh, but that, like, that 
just because the way ENS wants to work, they want to sort of like interoperate with DNS and like have this, this basically like they actually want you to be able to like go do something.eth instead of something.com and it just sort of magically works even without the custom protocol. Um, and so like for usability, we may just want to support this anyways, even if we also end up someday supporting an explicit slash ETH or ETH colon slash slash. Uh, so if anyone's interested in this discussion, making a decision on this, please put your name down. Um, uh, and then we can make a final decision of basically, do we want to redirect uh, .eth to .eth.link uh, in DNS link? That's, that's the name, that's the resolution we want here. Okay, those are the two design review proposals. Um, I will set up meetings for both. Uh, blockers asks nothing. Okay, uh, parking lot, Hannah. Yeah, so this is, <clears throat> this is more just like a poll to see if anyone by chance has context on this. Um, something that came up uh, over in uh, GraphSync IPLD land is, um, and in the Filecoin context is, um, you know, Filecoin has a Go IPLD C4 um, uh, as its um, main encoding, um, and that encodes uh, binary C4 nodes. Um, and I had uh, assumed that, the, you know, there's this new IPLD library with a new uh, binary uh, decoding, uh, encoding and decoding. And it turned out they were incompatible because in IPLD CBOR, um, when it encodes CIDs in, uh, in uh, binary, it puts a single zero in front of them. And it said, the comment says something about, uh, this is a hack until we support binary multibase. Um, and that, I have no idea who put that in. It goes all the way back to 2017. I was just wondering if maybe anyone on the call had any context for that. We are I stuck with this. Yeah. Uh, just, just look, that zero is a magic number that just happens to exist there. That's just treat it like that. Um, uh, so yeah. like the, the, the problem is that technically to so like originally CIDs always had, well, they always have multibase. Um, yeah. But like in everywhere else where we use them, we don't always use multibase because like with the extra zero, just with extra space. And like, if we know sure. that it's going to be minor, yeah. Uh, so just like, just treat it as a quirk of that format where the CID okay. is zero byte CID. I'm sorry. Uh, now it's cool. It's just now the virus is spreading to the, the new Go IPLD prime, so. <laughs> yeah, no, this, this isn't implementation specific. This is just a feature of the, of uh, the, um, the codec. I mean, it, yeah, just, there's yeah. always there, well, well, and it's a CID. All right, cool. Well, I just wanted to have, know that I can go to Eric and be like, yeah, tough luck. We got to do this, so. <laughs> yeah. It, yes. Is all that right, cool. defined somewhere and documented and proactively messaged to people that there's this weird yes. random quirk? Okay. It's in the Seabor spec, I believe. Or sorry, the IPLD Seabor spec. It is in the Seabor spec. Oh, that's really useful to know because that I can at least point to and be like, look, it's in the spec. So, yeah. Well, it was, unless it was deleted. Um, Hard to know. I need to, I'll, I'll track it down. I'll see if it's there. If it is, that'll be really useful to me because then I can just. Yeah. Through. So if you go to block layer, Codex, Dex, Seabor, uh, link format, or encoded using raw binary. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah, it explicitly says, cool. yeah, links are encoded using the raw binary identity multibase uh, in the field of the byte string type to, yeah, includes the multibase yeah, for historic reasons. It should be more explicit than that, but it should explain why. This is very yeah, yeah. cryptic and hard to read if you don't understand what you're talking about. All right. Well, yeah. Could you make a PR to fix that? If you uh, have time? I'm I not sure. Yes, I, I would. Or a bug error. Sure yeah. Actually, I, yeah, I'm let Eric do it. I fully understand what the, 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 the course. We can talk offline. This is this yeah. is this is not needed to be in this call. So yeah, yeah no, this is reasons. Okay, uh, cool. Okay, anyone else have anything else they want to talk about in parking lot? Other questions? Other historical quirks they've noticed? Uh, I guess just the maybe maybe silly question. Um, I I found like whatever a little while ago a, a bug uh in like the 
go to P2P testing stuff that like wasn't going to work on Windows because of like timing resolution. And it feels like maybe, is there like a way we can do CI testing that also does Windows? Uh, so I think we wanted to do this in Circle. I can't remember what the status of the Windows is. Uh, like they were working on Windows support. I'm not sure if they've gotten it yet. Like, if not, we can always like use app Bay or something like that. Um, but that just means like configuring it for all of our many, many repositories. This is why switching CI systems is always such an interesting task. Um, let's see. So they have. I see a release from twenty first saying early access for Windows. Uh, okay, so if we can get into that program, that would be awesome. And we could use this as an excuse to also switch all of the beauty over Circle, uh, because Circle has a lot of wonderful features that Travis does not have. Um, and it would be nice to use Circle for things, I guess. Hugo had a hand. Yes, Hugo, sorry. Yes, uh, in the meanwhile, we have had some issues on the JSLAN that we couldn't run uh, our tests in the Windows uh, in Travis. And we have a kind of a special setup for the P2P to run uh, their tests in Windows in Azure DevOps. So it's not uh, like a complete, uh, deep, uh, like if you don't want to run uh, all the repos in, with these, these tests you talked about, if it's less, just a small percentage of the things, uh, I can help you set up Azure while we wait for Circle CI. But if you want to roll out to all the repos, I would rather wait <laughs> because I mean, Azure are crazy. So, like, it may make sense to do this for just Guild of P2P, uh, like the, the master repo. Uh, I'm not sure. You can talk to Nathan about that. Uh, I like in general, I would like to switch to Circle also because, like, they have these these things they call orbs, which I really like to use, where like, you can like share configs between multiple repositories and up in the central location. We're currently doing this via hack. Yeah. They also have a really nice parallelism where you can just like make a bunch of build steps and they're all in parallel automatically. Uh, and this is how we've massively sped up our group tests where like we just test everything in parallel. Um, yeah, that, that's why I said if, if, if you want yeah. to roll out to all the repos, it's better to just wait. If it's just one or two to make sure Windows works, uh, I can help you out with the Azure DevOps, like with a, like a temporary solution. Aiden, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know if it's like it, people have more experience with with working with these CI tools. Probably know no more than more than more than I do. I just wanted to sort of flag it as like a, this is something that was like pretty easily avoidable if we had had this anywhere in the stack, at least on the P two P side. For what is the resolution here? I think we're already in the Windows Access Early Access Plan. Um, we should check with Marcus because I think it may already be set up for us. We would just need to do it with our existing Circle CI. That would be awesome. Okay. Okay, that's it for the parking lot. Anything else? I guess it's the other other section. Nope. Then I guess we have 15 more minutes we can reclaim. Uh, I will try to schedule the uh, two design reviews and have a nice week. See you all.